You're watching TVC Breakfast. Nigeria has made a remarkable improvement in eradicating polio from the society, but it is not yet time to celebrate. There is a plea for an executive order to be issued to enable compulsory vaccination in schools and gated estates. Polio has been the cause of lifetime disability for many children in Nigeria, making them a burden to themselves, their families and the society. Over the years, World Health Organization and UNICEF have partnered with governments of the country to ensure periodic vaccination of children who are at high risk of contracting and spreading the virus. But Nigeria is still one of the three countries that are yet to be declared polio-free. <laughs> at this courtesy meeting, delegation of the World Health Organization met with the Deputy Governor of Lagos State to discuss ways of improving and ensuring vaccination of children in the state. The vibrant administration which you lead, Your Excellency, will provide that order in order for us to send the signal that wherever you are, you are mandated to, to really uh, ensure you obey the rules of this country by allowing your children to be vaccinated because a polio in one place is a risk in everywhere. So Dr. Adamu says there has not uh, been any reported case of a outbreak in Nigeria since the past 33 months, but identified Itere, Makoko, and Marakana Canal in Ajaromi Ifelodu local government area that need urgent attention in Lagos. He says from survey, Lagos scores 89 percent as the state has recorded the highest number of vaccination in the country. In the last uh, 33 months in Nigeria, we don't have a single case of a uh, wild polio virus in Nigeria. So we are close to declaring declaration of a uh, wild polio virus free status in Nigeria. Lagos State government is determined to always partner with the World Health Organization to ensure a polio free state. We must do a lot to capture our children. Because all the experts, the doctors, they told us that between age 0 and 10, if you don't get it right with the children, then you've lost them. And so part of this is what we must actually make sure we do. So the gated estates, the, my, I think the important thing is to make sure that we are able to enforce immunization in schools. We are the children, because all those gated estates, they send their children to some schools. Vice Chairman Nigeria National Polio Plus Committee Southwest Yomi Adeumi joins me now to talk more on this. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Very much. Now, how has Nigeria fared at increasing immunity, uh, a polio immunity rather, a, a, amongst the, the community? Well, generally, the immunity is for all childhood diseases. Mm -hmm. It's not restricted to polio. Okay. So the uh, Nigerian National uh, Primary Development Agency is doing a lot to sensitize the states in ensuring that routine immunization of children is giving a flip all over the country. And uh, all states are being uh, engineered or encouraged to ensure that the level of routine immunization is very high. Mm. That is, there is the possibility of every child being immunized at birth and continuously till the age of five. So there are various levels of immunization, starting right. from OBG, which okay. ensures that uh, recognition is high. So Once what would you say contributed <coughs> to the success? How has uh, opinion shapers, when we talk about perhaps traditional rulers, uh, religious uh, leaders, how have they contributed to the success that we have achieved so far? Well, the issue of uh, uh, contribution of uh, opinion leaders, traditional leaders, is through the engagement process, which has been the need to, for them to appreciate and realize that if a child is affected anywhere in the world, it affects every child. Not only that, the, our children are our future. Our children are our future. Right. And we want to ensure that each child is prepared for his or her future. When a, health, when a child is healthy, then his or her future is more certain than when you are sickly as a child. 
So every aspect of routine immunization is engendered to ensure that that child has a proper base to move on to the world. As much as you have recorded so much success, like you have stated, are there still challenges you feel face on the field? And what would it take to declare uh, Nigeria polio free? Well, we are 99.9% .9 in making sure that uh, we are free. As you have heard in that uh, the report. Uh, report, we are 33 months without polio, wild polio virus in Nigeria. We have another three more months to go to be certified free as a nation, and in Africa too, to be certified free. And once this is done, Nigeria will be certified free. Now you have a stage of surveillance to ensure that all those that have been done, there's still a lot of surveillance to ensure that we don't have this issue back, and that we are where we are and remain polio free for a long time to come. So I asked, what are there challenges you face? Well, there are challenges, challenging of funds, challenges of advocacy, challenges of awareness. Uh, we need a lot of awareness. We need to continue to create awareness. And in this regard, we must seriously thank and be grateful to the Nigerian media for a lot of job they are doing to propagate and give the awareness about routine and the need for us to let people polio. Again, we have to make advocacy to all opinion leaders, traditional rulers, and all those that need to know that our child is our future, and we must make sure that they are okay. Then there is need for funding. Mm. Uh, all the governments of the world they spend a lot of money, close to $15 billion. How much have we spent so far? Close to $15 billion. Wow. Uh, ensuring that the children uh, not only immunized, but that polio is eradicated from the world. Rotary, as you know, is an organization that initiated this program right. in 1985 and okay. has continued to ensure that this program stays alive and on the front burner. We have to thank you. Your